Hi, welcome to Outsmart Your Guitar. I'm glad you could stop by to see what we're doing. Today, we're in part two on a series on transpositions, moving music from one key to another key. In part one, we dealt with moving rhythm parts. So if you haven't uh, viewed that lesson, go ahead and check that out and then come back and watch this lesson. In this lesson, we're going to focus on moving lead guitar parts from one key to another key. And we are particularly speaking about composed parts, parts that are played the same every time. All right, so let's get to it. But wait, hit that red button down there in the corner and you'll be subscribed to Outsmart Your Guitar. And if you ring the notification bell, you'll be told when new lessons are posted, which is usually around once a week or so. For an expanded version of this lesson, go on over to patreon.com slash outsmartyourguitar and subscribe at the building blocks level and you'll get this lesson and access to a lot of other lessons that are not included here on YouTube. All right, so down in the description, there is also a link to give me a tip if you feel so inclined. I'd appreciate it. Help keep me in coffee, right? <laughs> All right, let's get to the lesson. Transposing a guitar solo from one key to another key is actually not all that difficult. Now, it does require you be comfortable with a couple of things. First and foremost, you need to be able to play the solo reasonably well in the original key because you need to know what you're doing in order to be able to move it into a new key, right? So you need to know the scale you're using, you need to know which of the five positions of that scale the solo is taking place in, and the order in which those positions are being used to play the solo, because that establishes a pattern. The second thing you need to be aware of is the ability to play that given scale, let's say pentatonic minor, in any of the 12 keys that it sits in. So if the song is in A, and you learn the solo in the key of A, but the singer, you know, they can only sing it in D flat, okay? So you need to be able to move the whole thing up into D flat. Now, if you've learned the solo, you know it's a pattern. So you take that pattern and you shift it up into the new key, right? It's in explanation, that simple, <laughs> okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a couple of simple examples to show you what we're talking about. Then we're going to dive into the first solo. All right, let's go. All right, the first lick is pretty straightforward stuff here. We're just doing a little bluesy thing in the key of A, and it goes like this. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So, pause the video and play this lick. Get it nice and comfortable under your fingers. All right, because this is one of the things that's important to be able to play a lick fairly smooth and flowy. Then restart the video when you've got it down. Now I'm gonna give you a simple device to move this lick up to the new key. You played it here. <laughs> Right now, just play an A with your thumb hanging over the fretboard. Move up three frets, and now you're in C. So you have the basic shape you were using to play this, right? Move it up to C, you got the same shape. Because it's a pattern. Licks are patterns. They're played the same all the time. Now, if I wanted to take this and move it uh, down into, uh, say, G, I just come down to G and play it. Right? Move it up to D, way up here. Because I move this. It's a pattern. It's a shape get comfortable with these ideas, and that's how you move things around. So play around with moving this around. Pause the video, and don't just play it in C, play it everywhere. 
find it all over the fretboard and you'll see the lick just translates because it's a pattern, okay? And when you're ready to continue, press play and we'll get to the next lick. Here we have a D minor seven arpeggio with a little connecting tissue to a B flat major seven arpeggio with a little ending lick, all right? Here's what it should sound like. Pretty straightforward stuff. You'll notice I have the picking direction here for you as well, so that you can play this in a more fluid and flowing fashion. Arpeggios are best played with economy picking technique because that gets them flowing more smoothly. So you can work on that a little bit here. So pause the video, learn this, get it down, even put it to a metronome if you want, and then when you're ready to move forward, We'll flip this into another key. So press play when you're ready to go. All right, we're moving into F minor now. So you had it in D, now where's F? Well, D, D sharp, E, F. So this is gonna help you learn your fretboard a little better. That's one of the side benefits of transposition. Okay, so now in D, there is the uh, D minor seven arpeggio. So just go ahead and do that. Get it down, now play it here. Right? Then you just have to get the rest of the uh, bits there. And just play that until you're comfortable. Then we go to the D flat, which is a major seven. Just play that much, just the arpeggio. Get that down because you had it here in B flat. Well, now we're just moving it up to D flat. Right, and then the last bit. Now play the whole arpeggio. Now play both measures. Just like that because it's a pattern. Patterns are what solos are made of. And arpeggios are the same thing. They too are patterns, very defined patterns. All right, so pause the video, play through this, practice it, break it down into small bits so that you get each part. Then knit it all together to create the first measure and then do the same thing in the second measure and knit that all together. Then put the whole thing together as one complete whole. All right? Then, once you're comfortable with that, it's time to move on to the first solo. All right, what we're going to do here is pretty straightforward. You're going to employ your rhythm transposition skills first. <laughs> so basically we're going to learn a rhythm part that you can record into your looper so that you have something to play over when you play this solo. All right. So let's get to that. Here is the rhythm that is going to accompany the lead guitar part that you're going to learn next. Now, if you are familiar with my approach to playing lead guitar, you know I am very much a fan of knowing the rhythm parts well so that you understand what you're going to be playing over when you switch to playing lead guitar parts. We start with a G minor, then we go to a D minor, 
to an E flat major, B flat major, C minor, G minor, F, then tag it with a C minor before going back to G minor. Now, the rhythm One, two, and three, four, five, six. Now, in the steady state principle that I teach, beat strokes are usually down strokes. And in most instances, that is the case. Now, here we have one, two, and three, four, five, six. We're in six, eight, so the eighth note gets the beat. And there's six beats to a measure. Now the two sixteenths is two and, because two sixteenths equals one eighth. So the second beat is split into two smaller parts, right? Now, that's why I'm recommending you use all down strokes on the beat strokes. One, two, and three, four, five, six, all right? So it would sound like this. Okay, and that's it. And you play that all the way through the rhythm part. So pause the video and learn this part and learn it well. Learn the pattern that you're playing. It's a pretty straightforward pattern. And then you know what to do next. Using the scale degrees, find out where the chords live and convert to numbers. I provide a blank form for you to fill in the numbers in the written material. When you've got that all figured out, well, restart the video and we'll get to the melody. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play through the melody over the backing track I just recorded into my looper so you get a sense of what you're going for, what this is supposed to sound like, okay? So let me set up and do that. You'll see the solo is provided in the written material, so follow along as I play through it so you'll be able to see what's going on and you'll hear what it's supposed to sound like. All right, here we go. All right, so now you know what it's supposed to sound like. And here's what you wanna do. We're gonna walk through this a little bit and I'm gonna show you how to break this down and move it to the new key, which is B minor. All right, so let's start the process. All right, so here's, I'm just gonna do a couple of bits here to help get you started. I'm not gonna go through the whole solo because I want you to work this out. So I'm gonna get you started. The first thing you wanna do is play the bits in G. So let's just stop right there. Now, what are you playing? G, G, slide into G. So that's the key tone, right? So now we want to find B. So G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, right? And we want G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. Ah, oh, got it. Right? Now, the second bit in G is we've got this. Now you'll notice we're positional now. So you got your G right here, and your next note is right here. G. Right? To F. 
Now, in B, since we know we go just two frets back and one string over for that, so we're in B, go uh, two frets back and one string over. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so we've got that. Here's in G, now we go back three frets. Right? Go back three frets. Okay, you with me? You see what we're doing? And now back in G. Right, and then it goes. Ending on the exact same note as the first time through. You have the first time. Right there. Second time, changing position, but ending on the exact same note on the exact same string. So we went back from here, three frets. Right? Back two frets, changing position, ending on the same note on the fourth string. All right? Pretty straightforward. And then you've got uh, so we got that right. We ended on the same note, and then so we know we ended on the same note. See how that worked in the original key? Just work your way back up. It's all very positional from that point. Right? And then work your way back up. That's in the new key of B minor. Now, there's just a couple of measures left. You figure those last two measures out and get it down because you're just moving patterns. Now, the other thing you can do is look where all your G's are that you're taking advantage of. Right? Whoops. <laughs> so we're playing this G, this G, and that G, so you can kind of relate to the root tones when you're plotting everything out. So when you're in B, you've got a B here, a B here, and a B here that you're using in the solo. That's where the root, so you just move everything up. Okay? Again, if you need to review any of this, rewind and listen to the explanation. You'll get it. Just pay attention to what we're doing because you're just moving patterns at this point all right then when you're ready to move forward press play okay i hope you're getting the idea of the process of how to transpose things from one key to another now if you look in the written material you'll see I have the solo transcribed into the key of B. But I want you to understand the process of how you move a solo from one key to another, because you won't have it written out like I'm providing for you. So you're going to have to understand the process. This is why I'm giving you the process after playing it in G minor. Okay, now we're gonna move it into B minor and then I'm going to play it for you, which I'm going to do right now. So let me get that set up. I'm going to play it in the new key. All right. All right. Here we go in the key of B minor.
All right. Now, do you understand what we're talking about here? We walked you through how to recognize patterns by taking the solo down into bits and just learning those bits and seeing the pattern and then shifting the pattern up into the new key using the key tone as the reference, right? Where's the key tone in relation to this uh, bit being played? Now, it doesn't mean that the key tone is necessarily being played, but if you know its location relative to the notes you are playing, you use that as your anchor. Okay, everything is related to it here. And then you just move into another key and the same relationship still exists. So you can do that as well, all right? So again, I cannot stress, slow down, take your time, learn this well, apply the tools that I'm giving you here to do this and to do it well, all right? There you go. All right, here's your challenge. I want you to take a solo you already know Take the rhythm part, put it into your looper in the key that the song's in, record the solo over it, because most loopers allow you to do the overdub, and then preserve it somehow, uh, record it into your computer or whatever, so that you can keep it and save it and set it aside. Now, pick a new key. So if the song's in A, uh, put it into E flat. What the heck, right? Just pick an arbitrary key. Move the rhythm into E flat. You know how to do that now. And record that into the looper. Then take, take the solo and move that into E flat using the key tone as your reference in every part of the solo. Where are the key tones in reference to the different bits of the solo? You don't have to necessarily have the key tone as part of that passage, but knowing where it is in relation to the notes of the passage allows you to move it together so that you know that it's right here with this cluster of notes and then you move it into the new key and it's right here with the cluster of notes. Same relationship, right? Then you'll know you're getting it right. Move the whole solo into the new key, then play it into the looper, overdub on top of the new rhythm in the new key, and then record it into your computer and then play them back to back. Do they sound exactly alike? assuming that you've got the notes right in the, in the original key. Does it all sound correct in the new key? Double check your work. Make sure everything's where it belongs. Then continue, keep doing it with other tunes and get good at it, all right? Because this is a valuable skill to have, especially when you work with a singer and you hear them straining, you can go, maybe we need to find you a new key. Let's sit down and figure out what that key is. Then we can create a chart so the rest of the band can play it as well. And then you'll sound great and the band will sound great because you sound great. And that's how it works, right? Okay, that'll do for this series and this lesson. So when you're ready for the next lesson, it'll be there, as will I. See you there.